Hey, Patty here. So Qualcomm just unveiled a reference design of what is likely to be uh, the next generation of VR headsets that is going to arrive in 2020 or 2021 based on the XR2 processor. The new processor unveiled not so long ago, actually, and we made a video about it over here. So let's discover together what is this reference design, what it actually means, and why it's actually very exciting for the future that our VR headsets are gonna get into. So let's get into it, right? Okay, so first of all, let's start with what is a reference design. This is not a real headset. It's not gonna be an headset that me and you are gonna use because this is reserved for big companies that they wanna create and see what are the possibilities of this Qualcomm processor and some of the applications that it can be used with. For example, this headset is very basic, as you can see, kind of looks a little bulky, but imagine someone just put everything together, all the things possible in a single headset and say, hey, this is what we are capable of right now with this processor, and now you can build all around whatever you want. And that's the interesting part, because we can see a kind of a, the best scenario, or at least a great scenario over here, and then companies can shrink down the size, of course, like we saw uh, with Pico, or we saw, for example, also with ATC, with this new Proton project. And then like add cameras or take off cameras, change the positioning, change the screen. Uh, everything of course can be customized for a different company, but this is the base, this is A. This is what is going to work with this XR2 processor. Now, as we talked in the past, this kind of headsets will be much more powerful than the standalone headsets that we have right now. And the big focus is actually on 5G because it's something that is gonna really bring a new generation forward. It's the thing that is gonna really change the way we experience VR right now because much of the power needed to run various experiences will probably come from the cloud. That is kind of what we are hearing all around the world with all these new companies and console and stuff where the cloud is always more important. And well, a big connection is very important for it. 5G will make you use VR with very low latency, like if you are using actually your experience directly on your device. We know that a standalone device right now will never gonna have the same power of a PC, for example. That's why we connect the Oculus Quest with the Oculus Link cable, for example, to have the power of a PC with a standalone headset. And there are some news actually about the virtual desktop that just came out with a new version. It's still in beta, but it makes much, much better the experience wireless, and that's very interesting. But imagine with a 5G router, for example, we're gonna be able to transmit enough data like if we had the cable, but completely wireless without losing any quality, and of course, having the best image quality possible right into the headset. So that's why 5G is a big part of this reference design. Also, many companies are jumping in. We have some examples in the articles about Pagani, for example, that of course, we're all gonna know own a Pagani right now, but you can customize your Pagani inside as you want. And also BMW is actually jumping uh, with these new XR2 projects to use VR and AR to make your car what you want. Imagine you go maybe to the dealer and instead of watching just cars, they're never gonna be yours. You're gonna be able to get inside a car but from inside the car, being able to change everything you want, like uh, stitches, colors of your seats and stuff like that. Well, uh, I would be interested in that, but I don't know you. Then, of course, going back to the artwork of this reference design, we're gonna have three major things in there. So inside out tracking is, of course, a big thing. 60 OF is the way forward. We knew that the past XR reference design didn't have 60 OF, for example, but of course, with the advent of Quest, with, of course, all these new headsets coming, the market finally understood that 3D OF, just rotational, is not the way forward, but you wanna want to move in your environment. So that's why 6D OF is gonna be an important part in there. That's why we see a lot of cameras. In the reference design, we have four cameras in the front that are gonna also make use, not just of the inside out tracking, but also of the end tracking for interaction. Probably it's gonna be supported by Ultra Leap, 
that is the leap of motion sensor that we saw in the past that we used at the beginning to have any tracking in VR. So that's very interesting because their, their company has a lot of experience when it comes to end tracking. And we're gonna be able to see something that is much better than what we saw on the Oculus Quest, for example, having much more pinpoints on your hands for interaction and be able to interact with every single finger as we wish. And the other two cameras, because this reference headset has actually six cameras, the last two cameras are gonna be inside for the eye tracking. It's gonna be by Toby, that's the example they're giving it right now. Toby is the biggest company with experience for eye tracking. Uh, there are many different uses video games, also for advertising and stuff like that. It's a little creepy actually, if you think about it. And eye tracking is very important because we're gonna be able to have for the other rendering, for example, so I have the most of the resolution in the middle where we see when we are looking at and less all around that is not gonna emphasize at all the quality of the experience, but it's gonna just make it better to run and probably gonna have much better experience than the one that we are expecting with this new reference design. And that's great if you look at the little details, for example, as we were saying before, when you are customizing your car, your Pagani car, we said, and uh, yeah, also for interaction, social interaction. That's very important. Imagine in a future where we're gonna be able to work at home and have a social interaction much more natural because we're gonna be able to see also the position of the guy, of the avatar in front of us, being able to understand much better what a person is saying, I was saying, and uh, yeah, like if it was in real life. We're really, really far from that, but this is a first step, and that's why eye tracking is so, so important in VR. And when I talk about next generation VR, I usually talk about a tracking because that's gonna lock a lot of more performance than what we're seeing, better processor, and that's what we have right now with the XR2. And of course, something that I always say is inside out tracking because I saw at the beginning with Windows Mixed Reality that it was the way to go. Even Windows Mixed Reality wasn't perfect. It was the exact and perfect glimpse of what is gonna be the future where we don't need to like put sensor up anywhere, but if we can really make the inside out tracking much, much better. And that's the way we're going. Well, everything's gonna get much easier, easier to use, easier to share experiences with people and make it more natural because one of the biggest problems with VR that is not that easy to start unless you have an inside out tracking headset and that make it a little easier already. So put together and tracking, put together eye tracking, put together a better processor for experience. And that's what is the reference design. And many companies are jumping into it. Now they divided this reference design in two parts. We have one for AR and one for VR, but that doesn't mean that these can't actually get together. Like we saw, for example, on the links that we made a video about it over here. Now, the question that I really have is how much the XR2 headsets are gonna be. Now, companies are not forced to use eye tracking and tracking and all and everything together like 2K, 3K resolution uh, screens, for example, that we had over here. They can do whatever they want. This is just an example of what it's gonna be. But the real question is like, how far are we for good price for an headset that is gonna be based on the XR2 processor? Because we saw the links, for example, that it's gonna be the first headset actually using it directly, that is gonna be $1,500. That is much more than the 399 that we use with the Oculus Quest. For example, we all know that the way to unlock smaller price is a bigger production. So that's why we have the Quest at 399, for example. We have Facebook behind that probably, of course, puts money in there. And we also, the fact that we the production is so big and we use all the processor, that it's possible to bring down the prices. But yeah, are we expecting this XR2 to be more consumer or more business related? We don't really know yet, and Qualcomm didn't really respond to this question at all, but it's really not their focus because their focus is show the companies what they can do with this processor. And I think that this is very interesting because this gives you an example of what is gonna be the future of VR for sure.
Let me know what you think about it in the comment below. Are you excited for this new reference design? I know that this is ugly, but well, there are a lot of functions in there and this is actually a real product, but you can't buy it. Uh, so it's something that is working and is gonna work in the future and something that we're gonna see more ad sets coming with this footprint, for example. I for sure think that we're gonna see smaller devices, we're gonna see bigger devices, but putting all of this together, I think that the future is really looking bright for VR and AR. Let me know what you think in the comment below. And as always, guys, if you liked the video, like. If you did like the video, like. Subscribe to the channel for more of VR tech, because here we are, VR tech channel, talking about VR technology. And I see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Ciao.